Good morning, good morning, and blessed be the name of the Lord. Our theme is the works and life of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hmm. This is message number eight wow. of 42 messages Ooh. on the works and life of Jesus. Our subject for today is John the Baptist. John the Baptist is more about, listen carefully, John the Baptist is more about a calling and a movement and a work and a power than it is about a person. You see, John the Baptist represents not just a person, but rather, he represents a movement, a calling, a work, and a power. And when we mention and study the life and mission of John the Baptist, it should never be just ancient Bible history to us, good information to know about something that's past, you know. It should never be just a figure who represents the work done to prepare for the first coming of Jesus to this earth. It's, it's more than that. You see, rather it should always be about the, the message, the example, the calling, the movement, the work, the mandate of the work we now are to be engaged in to prepare the world for the imminent second coming of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now here's the truth of the matter. We are the John the Baptists of our day in this the end of time. That's what you need to get this morning. We are the forerunners of Jesus' second coming. We are the ones who are to be used to prepare a people to meet their Lord at his second coming in peace. We are the generation who must bear the straight testimony and the straight message of pure truth so that the hearts of the lost, the hearts of those who sit in darkness, the hearts of those who are the servants of the devil might be turned to truth and to God. That's us. Oh, let's pray. Our Father which art in heaven, we are so thankful for your word. We are so thankful that uh, you have condescended to use us to represent you, to prepare those in the same setting and in the same situation we're in to meet the Lord. We're thankful that you have chosen us to be vessels through which you do your work to finish the work in the earth. We are so thankful that you use us to justify yourself. Lord, we bow in your presence, Lord, declaring that we are unworthy. Yet, we long to be fitted to do your will. Do that work in us, Lord. Enlighten us this morning. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Remember, our subject is John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the continuation of the Elijah Reformation. You remember Mount Carmel and the great work that Elijah did on that mountain among the people of God. He said, if the, the Lord be God, then serve him. Mm -hmm. But if Baal, serve him. But choose today who you will serve. Yeah. Uh, and, and he brought upon himself a time of trouble. Remember that. And John the Baptist also represents the, the work that will be done under the angel of Revelation 18, where the whole world will be enlightened with the glory of God. In this the end of time, and that will bring upon us the great time of trouble. Uh, you know, John the Baptist's work got his head cut off. <laughs> huh? And it'll bring upon the world, as we fulfill the spirit and power of that work, the time of trouble. 
That's the, those are the things we need to know and think about when we're talking about John the Baptist. In Malachi chapter 3 and verse 1, it talks about the work and the mission of John the Baptist. And it says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. God says, I will send my messenger. He did it in Elijah. He did it in John the Baptist. And he will do it, and he is doing it through us. And, 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 and what is our work? What is our mission? We're sitting around looking at television. Mm -hmm. We're sitting around talking about we're afraid to go out and confront people. What is our message? What is our work? What is our mission? To prepare the way for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome responsibility. I hope we're impacted with that mm -hmm. this morning. It's an awesome work. Now, suppose we don't do it. Mm -hmm. You remember the parable of the slothful servant? Mm -hmm. He said, you know, I hid your talent in the earth. I still have it for you. Mm. Here. The Lord said, you slothful servant. Mm -mm. You sat on it and you didn't do nothing. You hid it in the earth. Mm. You didn't do one one hundredth of what you ought to have done. Oh, we don't want to be that slothful servant. Let's look at... Uh, uh, the work of Jesus in reference to John the Baptist. Let's look and see what Mark chapter 1 and verses 1 through 4 says. And this is very telling. What does it say? The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his pass straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Here the Bible is talking about the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in the gospel of Jesus Christ, it states that the beginning of it was that God would send a messenger before Jesus which would prepare his way before him. It was a voice of one crying in the wilderness, the wilderness of this sinful world, the wilderness of darkness, the wilderness of people who are bound by Satan. And his job is to prepare the way for the Lord and make straight his paths. How does he do that? He preached a gospel of repentance. Mm. Forsake your sins. Yeah. You know, we like to preach, uh, you just come and praise, and that's all right. If it's balanced, we need to give up our evil ways. What we do, and how we eat, how we dress, and what we don't do. The, listen, it is not a problem to talk about those things. We've gotten to the point where we don't just we don't even talk about it. Just love the Lord. Prime candidates to be lost. Elijah had a specific message. He called the people to repentance, to make a change. So did John the Baptist. A message of repentance. Give up your slothfulness. Give up your mindset that you don't need to do anything for the Lord. You don't need to serve. You don't need to contact your neighbors. You just love the Lord. Let somebody else do it. We, we got to repent of that stuff. Just eat what you want. Pray over it first. Well, we got to repent of that stuff, looking at witchcraft and Satanism and all kind of vice and stuff that's suggesting evil and illicit relationships, and we call it entertainment. We, we, we got to give up that stuff. The baptism of repentance, study no Bible, pray almost never. Too many who profess to be Christians do that stuff. All about the world, all about making money, all about making ends meet, and then in the end, they, they plan to go to heaven. After they accumulated as much of this world as possible, they have served this world. We got to repent of that stuff. In the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ was John the Baptist preaching the message of repentance. It's our job 
to do the same thing to prepare for Jesus' second coming. In Matthew 3, and uh, verses 1 through 3, what does the Bible say about this prophet of the Lord? In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Just like John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus' first coming, you and I are to prepare the way for his second coming. Make his path straight. Prepare the way. Make it easier in on Jesus. Prepare the way for Jesus. That's an awesome responsibility that God has given to you and I. And we're going to ignore it? We're going to say, no, I don't have time for that. You know, I got I to gotta pay for my house. I got to pay for my car. I got children to put through college. No, Lord, I'm sorry. You get somebody else to do it. Oh, we're going to have to answer for that. And John the Baptist is calling on the people of God to repent. Put your life in order. Devote yourself to the Lord. Do the will of God. Call on his name. Represent him aright. Be a living example of the truth. You know, uh, John the Baptist uh, was very strong on the reforms that we need to pay more attention to in this to end of time. Dress reform and diet reform. What does the Bible say in Matthew 3 and verse 4? And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locust and wild honey. Now, that's dress reform. <laughs> And diet reform, mm -hmm. you know, the, the scribes and Pharisees. Uh, and Jesus had a, a heavy on the diet reform and the uh, uh, dress reform. Uh, Jesus just wore plain clothing. Mm -hmm. You know, the Pharisees of the day had rich robes, you know, a different one for every day, spectacularly dressed and all of that type of thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's a sin to put on dress clothing. I'm saying that it's too much focus on it. Mm -hmm. And John the Baptist had it simple raiment, camel's hair, just a plain garment. Mm. That's an example for the people. And his meat, his food was locusts and wild honey. Mm. And locusts is talking about some form of vegetation. Look it up, research it. It's not talking about he was eating bugs. I said it's not talking about he was eating bugs. With honey. Yeah, a lot of folks think that. Yeah, man, he just didn't eat nothing but bugs. That's what he ate. <laughs> but who wants to follow John the Baptist's example? Go out in the yard, find bugs, locusts, preferably, and eat them. No, no, but you study it out and you'll see it for yourself. Mark chapter 1 and verses 6 through 8 says, and John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins. And he did eat locusts and wild honey and preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. He lived the simple healthy life in the wilderness country living help us lord mm -hmm. and he pointed everybody to jesus calling on the folk to repent get yourselves ready because the lord will anoint you with the holy ghost if you will get the sin out of your life mm -hmm. if you'll turn from your sinful ways if you'll put away your iniquities that's what he preached. We, we, we almost think that that's something that we shouldn't talk about. Oh, that's beating the people up. That's not positive. You know, just praise the Lord. Just, just come in and raise your hand and get happy and dance and uh, sway and wave your hands. and Just don't worry. Be happy. 
And there's a place for that, but not a whole lot of place. We need to repent. We, we need to be sober and serious. I didn't say depressed and down. Mm -hmm. I didn't say that. Mm -hmm. We need to prepare the soul temple or put it in a position where God can prepare it so that Jesus himself can fill it with the Holy Ghost. That was the work of John the Baptist. That was the work of Elijah. And that's the work for us in this the end of time. Here's, here's what uh, John the Baptist told, especially the church leaders, but he's telling everybody, but especially the church leaders of his day. And that was Matthew chapter 3 and verses 5 through 8. What does it say? Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. All Jerusalem and Judea and all the regions round about came out to hear him. But they also confessed their sins. That's what they were doing. They weren't just dancing and shouting and praising the Lord and just ready to go to heaven God is just gracious to us, and he's going to save us anyhow. That was not the message of Elijah. That was not the message of John the Baptist, who prepared the way for Jesus. And it will not be our message in this the very end of time. It's a little different than what we generally think and what we generally hear and what we generally preach. And then the Pharisees and Sadducees came out to his baptism, and Jesus called them out. We would say that was negative. He shouldn't have done that. Old generation of vipers, who, who warned you? And then he told them, listen, what you have to do, and this was for everybody, is bring forth fruit appropriate because you have repented. What you are and how you are and what you do matters. You can't hate everybody else and think you're the, the holy and the righteous one. Mm -hmm. You can't think everybody else is going to hell and you're the only one going to heaven. Mm -hmm. You can't think that everybody ought to look up to you, but you cast down everybody else. You can't do that. Bring forth meat that's appropriate, fruit that's appropriate. That's what you need to do. Repent. See, God is looking at what we are more than the, the, the mask that we put on. Be genuine. Genuinely repent. Got malice in your heart against your fellow brethren in the church. Yet you are coming to the Lord and raising your hands and praising the Lord. And God help us. Bring forth the proper fruit. Now listen, here's what's happening in the message of John the Baptist. Just like with Elijah. Just like with the message of Revelation 18 that we are to be involved in. Here's what's happening. Luke chapter 3 and verses 7 through 9. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. Yes. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Serious stuff, folk. Mm -hmm. Don't just come and say, I'm an Adventist. I'm a member. I'm a baptized member of the so-and-so church. I'm one of the remnant. That doesn't mean anything if the fruit you're bearing is not right. Repent. And let God work in you so that you'll bring forth the proper fruit. Fruit that's born when you genuinely repent of your evil. And then he says, now, not later, now is the axe laid unto the root of the tree. See, God is doing the work through this message. He's gathering together in bundles those who are going to be lost. He's gathering together in bundles, those whom he will seal and save. It's a serious message. It's bringing about a mighty event, the coming of the Lord. 
And in our day, it's bringing about, it's preparing the way for the second coming of Jesus. Those who accept the message the Bible says will be saved, and those who reject it will be lost. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. We're busy clinging to sin, talking about grace. And I, 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 I'm not what I'm going to be, but, but I'm not what I used to be. And we make an excuse for our sins and how we eat and the attitudes we have and the things we do and the things that we don't do. We, we're waiting for some power to come down and strike through our ceiling and, and electrify us. And then we're going to go out and spread the message. So many people have said that, you know, the time's going to come when we're going to go everywhere carrying the message. That time has already come. That time is now. You, 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 you will fool around and let the Holy Ghost pass you by. And you will have committed the sin against the Holy Ghost and don't even know it. You're sitting in the house looking at the television. You, you, you're looking uh, to make a little more money on your job so you can buy a better house and a bigger car and, and all of that kind of stuff. Talking about you waiting on the Lord because you go to church every week. Some of you, us, even go to cyber school. Oh, we, 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 we serving the Lord by doing that. Lord, help us. And this message is the laying of the axe to the root of the tree. You're not bearing good fruit. The Lord said at some point, maybe yesterday, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, I'm going to cut it down so that it can be cast into the fire. Serious message, folk. And God wants to use you to bear it to others. Let me tell you how great a work John did. Let's look at it in Matthew 3 and verses 13 through 17. Who, who, who amongst us wouldn't uh, grab at this privilege if we had it? What does it say here? Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. Mm. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The baptism of John that Jesus experienced opened up the gate and God poured upon him a power and a spirit unparalleled, unmatched, infinite in every way. And when he ascended back to heaven, that same power he baptized all of us with. John is the one who baptized Jesus. You hear me? <laughs> he baptized Jesus. At this point, Jesus saw the Spirit of God descending upon him and lighting upon him. And he heard a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. He ushered in Jesus. John did. And we are to usher in the, not first coming, but the second coming of Jesus. Preach a message that prepares folk to receive the light of rain, that power that will lighten the earth, the whole earth, with the glory of God and prepare it for the reaping. The Bible says, we're talking about the work that John did. Uh, he pointed folk to Jesus. That's what he did. Uh, John chapter 1 verses 29 and 31 says what? The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, mm -hmm. for he was before me, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water." that he might be made manifest to Israel. What are you talking about? <clears throat> Didn't they serve God? Weren't they the chosen people of God? Weren't they God's elect? Weren't they the repositories of God's truth? You mean God had to send a man to manifest Jesus and the truth to Israel? Well, it's the same today, folks. 
John the Baptist had a message that culminated in, Behold the Lamb of God. Look to Jesus. My job is to turn you from sin and darkness to the living God, to the Savior of the world, the one who takes away the sin of the world. I baptize you with water, but he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Look to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God. That's our message. That's our message to a dying world. As a matter of fact, folk began to, to do it as he preached. Even some of his own disciples, even some of the disciples of John the, the Baptist, left him and followed Jesus. John chapter 1 and verses 32 to 37. What does it say? And John bare record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him, and I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Again the next day after John stood, and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Several of the disciples who became disciples of Jesus were first the disciples of John the Baptist. Jesus walking by, and John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God, this is the Savior, this is the Messiah. This is the one who I'm preaching of. This is the one who will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. They broke camp. <laughs> they left John. Huh? We're going to follow Jesus. That's our job, folks. We don't need to follow him. We don't want to follow him. We want to point folk to Jesus. This is our work. It's a great work. Now, suppose John had gone home and and uh, maybe went over to the gladiators' fights, you know, we'll go down there and... He's keeping up with who's the champion and who's the runner-up and all that kind of stuff. And then, then he got to leave there and go to the feast. You know, maybe, maybe that's a, a good thing. Maybe they're having a, a, a church banquet. He got to go down there and have a feast with that. You know, uh, and then he's got to play some uh, uh, tennis. And, and then he's got to shoot a little pool with the fellas. Then he's got to go to the movies and look at the television and get some sleep. And, huh? Suppose he had to live a life like that. Mm. You know, the type of life that generally professed Christians live today. We have a duty. We have a work. And John the Baptist represents to us a work, a message. He, he gives us an example. It's a calling. It's a movement. It's a mandate from heaven. Are we fulfilling it? Are we fulfilling it? <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Mm -hmm. Leading folk to repentance so that God can fix them so that they'll be recipients of the early and latter rain. That's our job. Mm -hmm. Just not to run church programs. Well, we, 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 we're in a system that molds us to do nothing but run programs and call it ministry. And we really believe that it's ministry. We really believe that. Pass by thousands of people in the street and go over to the church and have a program. Oh, we got to have some program in the church, you know. And those who are in darkness are left out there. We busy preaching to the choir, saving to the saints having a treat with this group and that group and Mother's Day and, and, and all kind of Usher's Day and this kind of day and all kind of stuff. But doing the work. Let's pray. Our Father, not God, help us to be modern day John the Baptists. It's not about a man. It's about a movement. It's about a work. It's about a calling. It's about a mandate. Lord, Help us to repent of the world and the things of the world, and selfishness and sin, so that we can be imbued and call others to repentance so that you might fill each of us 
with the fullness of the Holy Ghost. And we will go out and fulfill the movement of Revelation 18, where the whole world will be enlightened with the glory of God. And then you'll say it is finished, and you will come to receive us unto yourself. And many who will be, uh, uh, many will be brought into the fold, and others will leave. Help us, Lord, to do your work and finish the work and prepare people for the second coming of Jesus. Use us to do this. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.